A lot of us have older devices with component outputs that we want to show on our modern televisions. The issue is how do we get that to HDMI? So today I'm going to take a look at the Porta HDMI from Component Scaler and see if that's good for a lot of use cases. Now I will test it in detail at 720p and 1080p modes and we'll take a look at the quality differences as well as take a look at the lag with controllers on an Xbox 360 to see if we can use this for gaming. At the time of recording, the Porta Component to HDMI Converter Scaler goes for about $29 on Amazon. There'll be a link in the description below. So let's take a look. So the Porta Component to HDMI Scaler Adapter comes in some pretty basic packaging. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear this open. Really nothing to save here. And of course, we can already see what's in the package. So there's a power adapter. And unfortunately, this power adapter is not USB, so it's just kind of a standalone unit. So kind of disappointed to see that. Uh, we also get a registration card and some instructions. Probably not all that useful. Maybe some specs in there that, that might be important. And other than that, we have the scalar adapter itself. And this unit has a number of ports on it. Uh, the top actually has a power and a signal indicator, so that's kind of nice. On the uh, back of the unit, just some kind of compliance information. And we've got an HDMI out, power input, and a button to select 1080p or 720p for scaling. And on the other side, we have the RCA connections for component and audio. So a pretty basic unit. Let's check it out. So of course, the important thing here is what is the image quality going to look like? Because if we don't get a good image quality, really it's not going to be suitable for any use case. So what I'm going to do is test the Xbox 360 in a few different display modes through the scaler, also in both of its display modes, and we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons as well. I should mention that I'm going to be capturing all of this on an inexpensive USB 3.0 card, just using MJPEG compression, which is not the greatest quality, uh, but it will be at least consistent across all of these demos. So let's take a look. Okay, and so we're starting here with 1080p on the Xbox as well as 1080p on the scaler. And you can see we get a very good image quality. Overall, I have to say this is very usable. Now we'll go and switch it over. And this is the Xbox 360 set at 720p with the scaler set at 1080p. As you can see, the image quality is very, very close. Very little difference here from one to the other. And now we'll take a look at the Xbox set at 720p with the scaler set at 720p. And as you can see, we're getting up both the image quality you would expect from 720p, certainly again usable, and if this is the appropriate resolution for the display device you're using, maybe this is okay. And now we're gonna take a look at 480p output from the Xbox 360. Here we're seeing it with the scaler at 1080p. And here we have the scaler at 720p. And now finally, just a few side-by-side -side comparisons. So now I have the Xbox set at 1080p and we're looking at the scaler at 1080p on the left and the scaler at 720p on the right. And now we're gonna take a look at the Xbox set at 720p with the scaler set at 1080 on the left and 720 on the right. And now we're looking at the Xbox set at 480p with the scaler set at 1080p on the left and 720p on the right. If you're enjoying this video or finding it helpful, I'd like you to consider subscribing or smashing the like button. It really helps the channel out and it also gives me an idea of the kinds of content you're looking for me to create. Okay, and so I just wanted to give you a little demonstration in terms of the lag with the controller. So I've got the Xbox 360 hooked up here uh, with Tomb Raider. And let's just take a look. If you can see the screen in the background, and I have the controller in the foreground. I don't have any professional equipment for testing lag, but I mean, for me, it's about playability. So let's take a look here. I'm going to press a few of the buttons and you can watch the uh, display on the screen. So now uh, I'm going to press the jump button. And as I press jump, we can watch, uh, watch the reaction. Now the same with the uh, crouch button. Now we'll just go forward a little bit and backwards a little bit, side to side. And so as you can see, I mean, it's basically responding as I would expect uh, just from the Xbox 360 in general with a wireless controller. 
I do should note also I do have the TV set to game mode to minimize the input lag. Okay, and so I took a look in post processing and I actually measured the lag based on the frame differential. And so what I found was about a total of 150 milliseconds of lag between the button press and the action on the screen. And when you think about it, the Xbox 360 itself has about an 80 millisecond lag just between input and the game response. The TV is about 28 milliseconds for this particular model. And using the wireless controller, it's been tested at around 21 milliseconds. So when we add all these things up, we basically, you know, we end up with about 21 milliseconds or so attributable to the scaler itself. And again, this is not a scientific test, but it just gives you an idea of the difference that you'd have using the scaler versus trying to find another solution. And keep in mind, if you plug the component directly into a TV that has component inputs, it's going to be doing the conversion as well. So it, it's not as though you can get away from any sort of scalar lag when you're dealing with component to HDMI conversion. So overall, I find it quite playable. The other thing I'll mention here is that when I did the test, I had the Xbox 360 set to 720 and the scalar set to 1080. And so the idea was to give me kind of the worst case scenario for the amount of lag. Uh, and again, the game is really playable. So I think, uh, I think this is an option. Well, after running these tests, I think the results are kind of interesting. I mean, this is an inexpensive scalar device. And uh, surprisingly, we got actually pretty decent video quality. And uh, lag actually is very playable for most games. I mean, this is not a high-end gaming solution by any means. But, I mean, it's very usable nonetheless. And if you're just looking at playback content, of course, the lag isn't going to make any difference. But, yeah, the image quality, the scale actually does a pretty good job. So I hope this helped you out. I mean, this is a, something we all face in terms of getting our older devices to work well on HD uh, TVs. And often the inputs on the back of the TV don't do a great job when it comes to legacy devices. So scalar boxes like the Porta are something we all need to take a look at. And check out some of my other videos. I'm doing a series on video devices, essentially. So HDMI conversion, up conversion, cables, anything switching, anything really to do with video routing and that. So I'll have a number of videos coming out in the near future. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.